Okay, I don't know if I can do this one-handed because uh, I gotta hold my phone. But if you've ever wondered how the analog stick from a Nintendo 64 controller works, I can demonstrate that. So, oops. When you move the joystick, it actuates this these little arms here, and they actuate these little wheels. And so you can probably see that this has a bunch of tiny little holes uh, on the outer edge of it. And I don't know that I could, oh, there you go. This doesn't have the, because there's normally a spring compressing all this down and keeping it together. So it doesn't have that right now um, because I have disassembled this for cleaning. But, uh, and I just put that, uh, or I pulled that plastic uh, O-ring off. So anyway, those little wheels, if I can pull this off because it's just going to fall apart. These little wheels sit inside this little chamber here, and I can show you. So this kind of, if you get the angle right, it just kind of sits down in there. And so those sit down in there, and then this PCB sits on top of it. Now, I'm not going to insert this yet. But you'll see that this has two little gaps on it. Now what these are is one side of this is a little infrared. Well, I don't know if it's infrared or LED. I would guess it would be infrared. Um, little light. And it shines to the other side. And the other side is a sensor. So it can tell when there's light on it um, and when there isn't. So that's what those little holes in the wheels do uh, that are connected to those little gears. Uh, they go between these little sensors and sort of it calculates based on how many interruptions of the beam there are in a given period. Um, so, and that by that it calculates the value, sort of the analog number value that it gives to the system. So if you ever wondered why, if you were going to, or when you turn on the Super Nintendo, or Super Nintendo, the Nintendo 64, it's very important to keep the analog thumbstick in the center. And if you ever wondered why, this is why, because it can't really, it has no sensor for where the center is. All it knows is what the changes are. So it assumes that whatever the value it was, uh, when you turn the system on, it assumes that zero. So if you hold the joystick far to the left, turn the system on and then let go, it then thinks it is pushed to the right. So it, it's kind of an interesting little quirk. But this is a very basic system, but it's a very reliable. Uh, and you can get pretty accurate, so you see how tiny those little things are. Um... I don't really want to count them all, but I'm sure some engineer knows somewhere. But yeah, like, I find this kind of stuff really neat. And I was just taking, a, taking this apart for cleaning, and I thought it was really interesting. So yeah, that's the sort of basic electromechanical function of at least the Nintendo 64's thumbstick. I don't know how the thumbstick on like a dual shot controller works uh, might be a very simple uh, similar principle or uh, I don't know about the GameCube either um, I know the GameCube's thumbstick design is almost completely different um, but I would imagine it's something similar to this so yeah now I have to go figure out how to put this back together so that'll be fun.